Hello, Steve White, Steve White 39. Well, I watched the new Short Trek um, Q&A. Um, I was expecting actually quite a bit of it because I really liked the casting of Ethan Peck and um, Rebecca Ramone. I wasn't really happy with the story and direction of Spock through season two, but um, I thought he was good. The, um, the performance was good and I like Rebecca Ramone. So I was expecting a lot from it. Um, I was a bit disappointed. Um, a couple of things are a bit off. Now, the first thing, um, now basically, starts off with close-ups of Spock um, in the transporter room. And the transporter room looks kind of good. It looks at original series. Um, it's got a lot of blue lighting. Um, it's, it's a different um, um, arrangement um, than the Discovery one and um, the ones we see season two um, he beams on with a smile um, and um, number one notices that at, at first of course um, she greets him um, she basically takes him to the turbo lift um, she points out that he hasn't asked any questions yet and she would expect someone in his position to ask a lot of questions so she basically says ask me questions I and I expect you to ask anyone that you're working with, ask so many questions to the point of being annoying. So he does. And this is, uh, some of the criticism is that he's basically turning Spock into Sheldon or something. And um, this young, eager sort of vibe from Spock, um, it's kind of strange. It's not unreasonable considering he's younger, he's new on the job, he actually want, he loves Starfleet, he wants to be there, he's excited. That all kind of works. Um, but the questioning does get annoying, and, um, he asked, am I being annoying? She said, it's a bit heavy. So he slows down, and he asks her a random question about what she likes to eat. Do you like eggplant? And she's like, God, I'm not answering that. That's just, we've, <laughs> she's sort of gone from one extreme to the next. Um, so the characterizations, characterizations and the acting is okay. Um, but, um, the first issue... <laughs> And I had to pause, because it takes about a minute and 45 seconds for them to get um, from the transport room into the um, turbo lift. And then another 30 seconds or so of talk before the turbo shift jams. Um, and we see a shot of this cavernous space with all these turbo lifts running through it like a turbo lift hub in the middle of the ship. Why would they have anything like that? There's nothing like that in the ship. It's just so stupid. Um, the, turbo, the turbo lifts are all in turbo lift tubes that run all around the ship, in very small little tubes that run all around the ship so the, 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 the turbo lifts can get to everywhere. And now they just have this one big hub in the middle of the ship or something where all the turbo lifts go through. That makes no sense. Um, it just makes no sense and I, I just had to pause for a few minutes and let the stupidity just just let it get get just get past it um, because they did the same thing on discovery but discovery at least was an unknown entity we don't we don't have a floor plan we don't know that there isn't a big space in the middle of the ship for some reason where the turbo lifts all sort of go around it like um like it reminded me inside Ghostbusters when they go in that elevator and they go into this um, TARDIS sort of space. It just was like the TARDIS. It just didn't work and people were like really even Trek Yards who Don't say much negative about Discovery. Even they sort of couldn't Explain that one um, So that was frustrating and I just had to take a minute and I got back into it um, Just just focus on the characters because this is the thing about Discovery even when they've got Things happening and things working right. They always do something just so unexpectedly stupid that it just pulls me right out, and I can't enjoy it. Um, okay, so th they call engineering, they're gonna be stuck there for a while. So they decide, this is just too high. Um, they decide that, well, we better talk because we're stuck here. So she says, ask more questions. So she goes through a bunch, of, he goes through a bunch of questions, and that's actually where it becomes annoying and they change the tone. Um, now, he asks her three questions about Pike. And he says, um, and she says, well, he asks her, what are three things about Pike? And she says, he listens to everyone's point of view and he will change his point of view 
you know, if someone else has, has, has a point. Um, he doesn't believe in force. If you're forced to use force, you've failed. Um, and he's totally unsentimental, except when you come to horses, which seems a little bit odd. Um, but, you know, this is one of the little things about him that we never learned in the original series, although we do see in, ca in the cage he rides horses, so we know he likes horses, but, um, okay. Um, they talk about things, I think they mention OS, as in what's the operating system, and she says 36.11.4, and, and they both agree that um, 0.5 lacks elegance. And there's a moment where they're both talking about something they both say fascinating at the same time. So they're showing that they both relate and there's, they have a kinship or something that, that they're going to get along, they're going to be friends, and we know that they we know that they did. So that all works, it's nice. Um, and then we get to, um, she asks about, was he smiling when he beamed on? And she said, and he says, yes. And he takes it, I shouldn't be. And she says, no, I would never ask, tell someone, you know, to deny their nature, basically. Um, diversity is our strength, but you should be aware of people's perceptions. And if you're going for, you know, a command role, you need to, you know, play the part, basically. And he says, I don't want command. And she says, bullshit, because um, I just had to get a swear word in there, because, you know, in apparently people swear in, in Star Trek's future now. Um, <laughs> because they haven't evolved from today, of course. Um, and she says, look, you don't take... Because they talked earlier about Starfleet and um, a particular teacher that was awful because um, they did the same course. Um, like I said, they've got similarities and stuff. They find some commonalities. And she says, she says, you don't do two years of that monstrous teacher, spend two years of them, you know, if you want to be just slinging a tricoder around and you don't want command, so I don't believe you. Um... <laughs> So eventually, um, they're, like they're, when they're talking about, um, he says basically, okay, I'll, I will hide my nature. I, I, I will not, you know, show my emotion, basically. She basically instructs him how to behave, which is something, the idea that she taught him or, or, or um, affected him and, and she's responsible for how he behaves on the Enterprise that it was her, and it's not a bad thing that um, this character would have had influence on him, but in such a spur of the moment, quick little simple way, like he wouldn't have already worked this out for himself. Um, and he does say that, um, you, well, she says you have to keep your freaky to yourself. Um, and he's, he, he, and, you know, she says she knows how hard that is. And he says, you know, basically, really, um, you know, I've been doing that my whole life. And, and, you know, she says, even if it hurts. And he said, I've, you know, I've been doing that my whole life, I understand. So then he says, the next logical question is, and she sort of says, okay. And the question would be, what is it that you're hiding? So then she starts singing the Pirates of Penzan, like I was a theatre nerd in, in, staff, in high school or something, or a staff lit or something. So she circles him singing, and he looks at her like, what the hell? And then eventually they stare at each other, she feels uncomfortable, and then he breaks into song as well, and they both finish off the song and laugh, and Spock laughs out loud. And I, I don't know if it works. Is like We know Vulcans have feelings, we know as a half-human he had feelings, he's always trying to hide them, but... He's just too open. It's nice in a way that they're sharing this moment. He's, he's, he's just like, oh, I can trust you. I can be myself around you. But yes, I will, you know, keep that under control around the crew in general. So I, I kind of get that's what they got from it. But it's just a bit too simple. Um, but um, it's sort of a nice moment. But it, it still doesn't, it's still kind of off at the same time. Um, well, just at that point, um, they get rescued because um, there's someone sending someone down from engineering. They're literally um, coming down on a rope to repair to get them out of the turbo lift. Um, so they come, they pull off the top of the turbo lift, and they drop down um, a little rig. And she is lifted out, and she's lifted out into this giant cavernous um, mass of um, 
turbo um, lifts, which would look good in any circumstance if it made any sense. Um, <laughs> and he's just left to watch. And then they go up on the bridge, and we see the bridge from a nice shot of it. Um, and surprise, surprise, Pike is on the bridge. So Ensign, um, Ensign Mount actually does make an appearance in this. And he asks um, number one, Una, is this the new boot, as in recruit? Um, she says yes and pretends not to know him and reads out his name. It's Ensign Spock. And he says, basically, at ease. He says, that's not easy for me. And he said, I understand. Um, and then he looks at uh, a phenomena on the view, view screen and asks if Vulcans experience awe. He says, yes, but we keep it to ourselves. And he looks at Una like, I got it. I understand. She smiles. Pike smiles. Spock looks out at the beautiful nebula in awe. And it ends there. Now, character-wise, it's okay. Acting-wise, it's good. Um, there's a lot of colour. Like, there's too much orange in, in, the, uh, in the corridors. I said that the first time. Um, they just needed a couple sections. Not every section have orange on it. But the lighting is bright. There's blue, there's red, there's yellow. It's, it's nice. It feels more like the original series. And it just has more life to it than Discovery. Discovery was so grey and dull. And the way it's shot... Ways acted everything about the short trek and hopefully if this is an indication of the pike series if it comes is good it's just those two little things of there's a forced intimacy where some people are taking it as romantic interest but it seems to be that they're like getting comfortable with each other they're getting each other's space and being comfortable with it not so much a sexual attraction is how i took it um and that seems a bit forced and the the turbo lift is ridiculous but aside from that it's okay and like season two of Discovery, this, the tone and the colour and the characters and the acting is all good, but there's just these just stupid science moments and these sort of forced character moments that don't quite work because the writers aren't very good. That's basically what's happening. And it's getting better, but I'm impatient. I want it good now. I want good Star Trek now. I don't want to wait two or three years for them to get it right when they're already two years in they're up to the third year now of discovery um so it's it's hard I'm, I'm being optimistic i'm giving it a chance i'm going in with an open mind and i'm getting slapped in the face and pulled out every time but there's still good parts it's still it's still enjoyable um in some ways so i still have some hope i'm not giving up yet but it's frustrating um and that's if I look at it all, not considering they just destroyed the Federation in Season 3 of Discovery, <laughs> which I'm still not over. Um, but yeah, so that's what happens. That's what I thought. Um, um, I'm surprised Netflix hasn't got it, but then I remember they didn't have the short treks from Season 1. They were dumped as um, extras in the trailer section right before Season 2 pre premiered. Um, so I'm guessing when Season 3 premieres, they'll do the same thing. So I probably won't see a quality copy till then, or maybe when they release on DVD because season two is going to have the short treks on it. So, yep, yeah. I'm just going to leave it there. Um, feel free to enjoy them yourself. Um, <laughs> I'm not judging anyone who doesn't enjoy the show for the most part, as long as you acknowledge that there are some flaws. And a lot of Trek Discovery fans just cannot acknowledge there's any flaws. Um, if you acknowledge the flaws, we can work on it. We can work together on it. <laughs> but um, I'm just going to it there um feel free to um let me know what you think um if you disagree or if you have any thoughts or any knowledge about um where the short tracks are going i'd be happy to hear it um feel free to like subscribe or comment thanks bye